The goal of this video is to put together everything we have learned about area to find the area of shaded regions and compound shapes. Our first example is of a compound shape, which essentially just means it's two shapes in one. So you're going to have to dissect this into shapes you do know. So for example, this one looks like we've got some sort of rectangle here and then a half a circle at the top. Okay, so we have this rectangle here that's 12 feet by 8 feet. So what we know about rectangles is that both sides or opposite sides are congruent. So this would be congruent to this and 8 feet would be congruent to the other side that I just drew in up here, which makes the diameter of the semicircle 8 feet. So if the diameter is 8 feet of the semicircle, then the radius would have to be half of that because the diameter is all the way across, the radius is halfway across. So the radius would be 4 feet. With all that information, you should be able to calculate the area. And the area of the whole shape would just be the area of each shape added together. So let's start with the rectangle because that is probably the more familiar shape here. The area of the rectangle is just base times height, which would be 8 times 12. Which if you don't know what 8 times 12 is, you can always get out your calculator, calculate it, it's 96. Um, but don't forget your units, I'll include them at the end. And now we're looking for the area of the semicircle, which the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, if we're going to do the semicircle, that's only half of a circle. So we'll have to divide that by 2. So our radius is 4 feet. We're going to have to square that and divide by 2. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16 times pi divided by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so this is really just 8 pi. If I wanted exact, that's what you would tell me. If I wanted you to round it, you'd multiply by 3.14, or better yet, your pi key in your calculator. That's better. And you get 25, or approximately 25.12. And our units are feet, since we're talking about area, it's feet squared. Okay, again, this little squiggly equal sign just means approximately, not exactly. So I have the area of each piece. Now I need to add them together for the total area. So the total area is just the two pieces added together, which would equal then 121.12 feet squared. Just one note about the semicircle. You could have just done pi r squared, got that it was 16 pi, and divided by 2 at the end. Uh, you didn't have to write this formula at the start. Just make sure you divide it by 2 at some point. Okay, now we have the area of a shaded region. So I have a shape inside another shape, which remember we said if there's a regular polygon inside a circle where all the vertices touch, it's called inscribed. It, it, its apothem is 2 centimeters. The apothem of the square goes from the center to the midpoint of the opposite side. So that's 2 centimeters. Okay, now we need to find the total area of the shaded region. Okay, in order to find the shaded region, I can't just calculate what this piece is, this piece, this piece, this piece, and add them up because I don't know that information. So what I'm going to have to do is find the area of the entire circle and remove the part I don't want. So the part I don't want is this square here. If I take the area of the circle and subtract the area of the square, I'll get the area of the shaded region. In order to do that, I need to find the area of the circle and the area of the square. So to find the area of the square, I would need the length times width, or just one of the sides. To find the area of the circle, I would need the radius. So at some point, I'm going to need to find this distance here and one of these distances here, which it doesn't really matter which one because they're all the same. So keeping that in mind, I need to look at this picture and see what I know. The only thing I know right now is the apothem, which is 2 centimeters. Okay, but I do know that this is a square, um, so let's think about what I know if this is a square. If this is a square, then let me draw in a couple more pieces so we can talk about this. If you remember back to properties of polygons, we know that the diagonals bisect one another in a square, and the diagonals are congruent. So that means all four of these diagonal pieces here, which I'm not going to draw them all in, but all four of them would be congruent. So with that said, what I've drawn here with the red dotted line is an isosceles triangle where both of these segments are congruent. 
I don't know what they are yet, but I know they're congruent. If they're congruent, this is an isosceles triangle. And another property of a square is that the diagonals intersect at a right angle. So this is an isosceles right triangle, which would make this bigger triangle here a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Okay, any isosceles right triangle is 45, 45, 90. So if this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that means both smaller triangles also are 45, 45, 90. Since this is 90 degrees, if this is um, 45, then our remaining angle also has to be 45, which makes sense because it's kind of half of that total angle here. So I can erase all of that. The point of that was just to prove that this triangle here is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle where one side is two. Okay. Now, the legs of a 45, 45, 90 triangle are always congruent. So if this is 2, then this is also 2. And then the side opposite the 90 is x root 2. Since our x is our smallest side, it's just 2 root 2. And I found the information I need to find the area of the square and the area of the circle. So let's start with the area of the square because that's the easier one. The area of the square is just, and I'll write this in here, is just base times height. Which in this case, well, I only found this piece, but if that's 2, then this is also 2 because we know the apothem goes center to midpoint, which would make the entire side of the square 4. So all of these sides here are going to be 4. So the area of the square is just 4 times 4, which is 16. Now I'm going to erase all that just because it's starting to get a little crowded and I want to make sure you understand what I'm doing. Okay, so I found that. And now I need to find the area of the circle. The way we find the area of the circle is pi r squared. In order to find the area of the circle, I would need to know what the radius is, which using my 45, 45, 90 triangle, I found was 2 root 2. So it's pi times 2 root 2 is my radius squared. But you can plug this in your calculator, but I'm actually just going to multiply 2 root 2 two times, just so we can see how that's done. So I always say numbers stay with numbers and roots stay with roots. So multiply the 2 and the 2. And then you will also go ahead and multiply the root 2 and the root 2. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. Root 2 times root 2 is actually root 4. But what is the square root of 4? It's just 2. So 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 is 4 times 2, which is just 8. Okay, so if I substitute that into where I was doing my work over there, 2 root 2 squared is just 8, so our area is 8 pi. So in order to find the area of the shaded region, we'll take the area of the circle, which is 8 pi, and subtract 16. Which that you can plug in your calculator now since they're not like terms. So 8 pi, I would multiply by the pi key in my calculator if I had one. Um, that's 25.12. Subtract the area of the square is 16. So the area of the shaded region is approximately 9.12, approximately 9.12, and our units were square centimeters, or centimeters squared, however you prefer that. Okay, so in order to find the area of the shaded region, I'll find the area of the hole and subtract the area um, that I don't want. Now, just for a bonus, it asks what's the probability that you threw a dart at the shape. I'm going to leave this as a bonus, but give you a hint to get started. If you're calculating probability, we always do what you want, the total that you want, over the whole. Okay, so what I want is it to land in the, excuse me, the unshaped region, which is a square. Okay, so I want it to land in a square, so I want the area of the square. The whole, then, is where it could land. So it could land in the whole circle. So I want the area of the circle. And if you do that, you can calculate the probability that that's going to happen. So this is a bonus. We're not going to talk about it in in class, but just as an extension, um, if you take a higher level math, you probably will study probability. And the circumference of the circle, I'm also going to leave to you. Remember the circumference formula. What do you need to know? You may already have it. Just plug it in to test yourself. And that's how you find the area of shaded regions and composite shapes.